Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking through my lino printing tips and tricks. Just a little disclaimer, I'm not a professional and these are just things that have worked for me in the past and things that still work for me now. So the first thing is that the grey SD lino is really good for picking up loads of detail and texture and things like that and softer surfaces are not as good for this. So if your print that you're trying to make is really detailed, make sure that you are using a hard lino rather than a soft lino. Tip number two is that soft surfaces print a lot easier easier without a press. I know loads of people who use the Speedball Speedy Carve, the pink stamp rubber. It's super easy to use and it's also super easy to print. It's great for beginners and things like that. Um, it just is so much easier to print because you have to apply less pressure than using a harder surface. Tip number three is to reuse the offcuts of lino. I always end up with so many offcuts, whether I'm cutting down like an A4 block into a different size, whether I'm just cutting them off the side of my print because they are excess, I always save them because they really come in handy, whether it's for like testing out new tools or like just practicing and things like that or for carving something really small. Um, lino can be really expensive, so I always keep them and yeah, they always come in useful for me. So tip number four is about lino tools. I use the file tools and my tip is to not buy a full set of six tools. I only use about three tools out of my set of six and especially if you're starting out it's really just not needed to buy six because they are super expensive as well. Um, I would recommend a U gouge and a V gouge and then the really tiny tool and then maybe like a bigger tool for removing the background of your design. It just completely depends on your design but if you're just starting out I wouldn't recommend buying six. Like I don't even use all of mine. So this tip is for your lino before you start carving and this tip is to paint the lino with like some acrylic paint or something just so that you can see where you're carving if you paint it in a brighter colour. I always paint mine in like a blue and um, just because then it makes it easier to see where you've carved because there's a contrast in the colours between where you've painted which is where you haven't carved and the grey lino which is where you've carved. I think Japanese printmaking vinyl has like a green layer on the top and then underneath is like a dark grey I think just so it's really easy to see your design and to see where you've carved. That's definitely like, so, I find that so, so useful and it helps me not to miss bits of my design when I'm carving and things like that. So tip number six is not to rush when you're carving. I am definitely someone who does this, especially when I'm getting close to the end of a design. I always rush through it like I'm just so desperate to get it finished. But it's also really important for safety reasons just to make sure that when you're using the carving tools you're using them like slowly so you're not going to cut yourself and so that you also won't take a massive chunk out of your design. So tip number seven is to singe the edges of your lino. You only need to do this if you're using the grey lino that has this on the back because as you can see it has loads of little flyaways and I just singe mine with a candle and then it means that the flyaways won't pick up any ink and they won't print at all and I wish I learnt this tip sooner because it has been like the bane of my life is like trying to clean the edges of the lino when I didn't need to do that all along I could have just singed the edges so I that is like probably the best tip I can give like I find that so helpful. So the next tip is about ink and I would say like don't buy the massive tubes of water-based ink. I bought like when I was starting out I bought like three tubes of the water-based ink and I still have them and I don't know what to do with them because I don't use them. I much prefer an oil-based ink it just works so much better it prints cleaner and things like that and I use the calico safe wash relief ink so I can still clean up with water which was like really important because I didn't want to make a massive mess but if you get the safe wash inks you can clean them up with water I just find with the cheaper water-based inks they just don't print very well it can be super frustrating they can the, the ink can like bunch up on the side of the print and things like that and oil-based inks just give a much much better print so tip number nine is to always do a test print on a cheap piece of paper, like don't go straight in with your expensive paper. I've definitely done this in the past and it's just so annoying when you've like forgotten to carve a bit of your design or it's just not quite right and you print on a really nice piece of paper and then the print is just not any good. So I always recommend printing on like a thin recycled paper or something like that, something with a low GSM. 
um, yeah, just for your test print, just make sure everything's good before you print on your really nice expensive paper. So the next tip is to apply extra pressure using a spoon. I just use a, like a metal teaspoon, some people use wooden spoons. Um, I would first apply pressure using a roller or a brayer and then I go over with a wooden spoon or a metal spoon just to make sure that there's like an even amount of pressure or like if I'm having trouble printing one section of the design I go over it and use a little bit of extra pressure with a spoon and I find this helps to give a really even print and yeah it just works really well for me. So the last tip that I've got is to use a thinner paper or like a paper with a lower GSM. My favourite kind of paper to use is a Locta paper, it's really really thin and it just helps to pick up the ink really nicely and get an even print and an even coverage of ink over the paper. Using a textured paper it can sometimes be really difficult to get like an even coat of ink and like you might get like noise around your print and things like that so I would definitely recommend a thinner paper particularly if you don't have a printing press because it's just so much easier to print by hand onto a thinner paper rather than a really thick paper. So those are all of the tips that I have and um, please let me know what you think. I hope this was helpful. If you think I've missed anything out please leave it in the comments below but yeah that's it for this video. I'll probably do this again sometime because I have loads more tips but I thought like 10 was enough for this video but yeah anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video